When I'm looking for something to do in Nashville, I love to come out here to Cheekwood uh, in the heart of the west side of the city. We are in the old part of the garden now that was designed in the late 1920s and early 1930s by Bryant Fleming for the Cheek family as they were building their home here and he created these magnificent gardens, really in this area, mostly perennials. So things that consistently come back year after year. And I thought I would just share some favorites as I wander through the garden. One of them is this beautiful Gallardia. And if you need a plant that is tough as nails, this is native to West Texas. It grows along the dry, rocky uh, roadsides. It will also grow well in an irrigated garden, but the best place for this is hot, dry, full sun. And if you have that kind of location and you can't get anything else to grow, try Gallardia. This is a variety called oranges and lemons. There are also some that come in a deeper red and yellow bicolor, some that are solid red, solid yellow, but all hot, summery sunshine colors and a really beautiful plant. And then also in this garden are some great cannas. I love these black foliaged cannas with the bright orangey red flowers. Great tropical kind of foliage. Um, so many of our perennials all have a leaf that's kind of the size and shape of a teaspoon or a grassy leaf or something that's a fine texture. It's nice to have this big bold texture to break everything else up. A lot of you may be familiar with a really great plant called butterfly weed that's a native wildflower here in Tennessee. This is a tropical version of that plant. This is called Asclepius curasavica, or blood flower. It's technically an annual, but it will reseed itself politely, not aggressively, through the garden. And then in addition to these big bold textures of the cannas and all the foliage and flowers of the perennials, we have these great ornamental grasses that have been tucked into this garden. This is Miscanthus, probably Gracilimus, um, which is called maiden grass. These thin leaves, the pinkish tan flowers coming up here, and the flowering will go on from now until September, October, even on into late fall. Now I'm up here kind of in the midst of one of the bigger beds, and I, I stepped up in here because I want you to see the height of this coneflower that is next to me. Uh, this is Rudbeckia maxima. Uh, the large cone flower. This one actually is just about done, but there's one over here to my left. You can see this tall cone in the center and the yellow ray petals, just like a typical Rudbeckia. But the plant has this large blue-green foliage down at the base and then shoots up these tall wands of flowers in early to mid-summer. And actually, as the seed pods form, this is one of the favorite food sources for uh, goldfinches in the garden. So if you love attracting wildlife, Rudbeckia maxima is one of the best plants that you can have. And then down here in front of the Rudbeckia, I want to point out a plant that is native to Tennessee and very rare. This is the Tennessee coneflower, and you will notice without my touching it or doing anything, all of the flowers are facing east. So if you're ever lost out in the wilds of Tennessee and you see Tennessee coneflower blooming, you always know which direction at least is east. This is a fairly rare plant, fairly rare and unusual, native to the cedar glade areas of Tennessee. And again, we mentioned some plants earlier that are good for hot, dry places like the Gallardia, the blanket flower. This is another one that grows in exactly the same kinds of locations, hot, dry, rocky. Tough little plant. You want to leave some of the flowers to go to seed every year because it's a little bit short-lived and you always want a few seedlings coming along in the garden to replace the plant um, as it begins to die off three or four years down the road. And then directly in front of me is one of my favorite perennials of all time. That is Asclepius tuberosa what is actually called butterfly weed. Bright, brilliant orange in June and July. You'll see it lighting up the meadows and fields across the state of Tennessee. And it's also host to the monarch butterfly caterpillar. So if you have milkweeds of various kinds, this one included, you will have monarch butterflies in your garden and the green and yellow and white striped, black and yellow and white striped uh, monarch caterpillars. So if you see that caterpillar eating your foliage of your milkweeds, 
Don't pick it off. It's a good one. One of the great aspects of this garden is the way that it's laid out in a large sweeping curve. So as you wander, the path kind of meanders through. The beds are very generous and very wide, which I think a lot of times as homeowners, we're afraid of large scale and you really shouldn't be. Yes, it might be a little more work for you to do the maintenance and things, but these wide, generous beds allow you to have masses of plants that read well with one another. This is beautiful right now in full bloom, but even if there wasn't a flower, these beds would still be gorgeous because you have all of these wonderful textures like this nacella grass and the cannas and just interesting leaf textures with grasses and irises, different forms, different colors of foliage that really carry this garden through the seasons even if there's nothing in bloom. So if you're out visiting Cheekwood, I would suggest you bring a small notepad and a pencil to take some notes because there is a wide array of plant material, beautiful flowers in every corner of the garden, and you're definitely going to want to know what you've seen. For inspiring garden tours, growing tips, and garden projects, visit our website at volunteergardener.org or on YouTube at the Volunteer Gardener channel and like us on Facebook.